everyone. So today we're going to talk about Glee. Specifically something about Glee that's bothered me for about a decade now. I think Glee kind of doesn't get musicals. Now before anyone comes for me, I will just say that I think I'm uniquely qualified to make this video as a certified Glee and musical theater aficionado. Something you might not know about me was that I was um extremely obsessed with Glee as a teenager. I have seen every single episode, most of them from season two on, live on TV. I used to have Glee viewing parties with my friends, just like on The Office. I had a Glee calendar, Glee pajamas, Glee t-shirts. I saw the Glee concert movie uh, live in the theaters. I still own Glee Cranium somewhere. I could not find it today, but it's in my house. I was even Rachel Berry for Halloween in seventh grade. I know my Glee. I feel like it's my duty to share these thoughts with all of you. Try to explain this thing that I've been thinking about for literally years. First off, I want to say that I know there are a ton of other problems with Glee, from inconsistent characterization to problematic storylines to behind the scenes issues, <laughs> but that's not what this video is about. This video is about high school musicals and all the weird and sometimes terrible ways Glee portrayed them. Some of this is going to be subjective, based purely on my informed but still biased opinions, and some of it is going to be straight facts. A lot is going to be nitpicking, but if you have a problem with focusing on tiny little details in movies and TV and musicals, I think you're watching the wrong channel. <laughs> so strap in and get ready for me to complain about Glee. So for this ranking, I decided to take a bit of a different approach than I normally do. Instead of just listing out my picks and talking about them, I'm going to be breaking these down with stats, which I'll be giving in gold stars of course, and ranking them into a tier list gamer style. I'm also going to be talking about the amateur musicals only for this video, so high school and community theater. Sorry we will not be getting into Funny Girl today. Now to get to the stats that I'll be using. First is the choice of musical. How likely is it that a high school or amateur theater would actually choose this show in the first place? Next is auditions. How accurate is the audition process for the show? Casting. How accurate to real life is the casting? Accuracy. How closely to the real script and songs of the licensed version of the musical does Glee stick? Performances. How are the overall performances of the show that we see on screen? And are there any standouts? And of course, I'll point out any other factors or special abilities that contributed to my ranking. Let's begin. Our first high school show in Glee is Cabaret. Now this one is a bit truncated because the show doesn't go on, but we can still work with what we've got. For likelihood of choice, this one has some weak stats. While Cabaret is a well-known musical with a very famous movie adaptation, if you haven't seen it, first of all, go watch it, it's amazing. But you might not know that it's actually a pretty controversial show with some very adult themes and heavy subject matter. The 1998 version, which seems to be what Glee is performing, even has an explicitly bisexual lead. I think Glee and other teen media like Love, Simon that show high school performances of it can sort of coast off of the name recognition and the most famous and least controversial songs. But I think things would go a little differently if we were to actually see a bunch of teenagers perform, for example, Two Ladies or Tomorrow Belongs to Me. I'm not saying this show is never performed in high school, but it's certainly not a popular choice, which is why I give it two gold stars. As for the audition process, this is a weird one since the whole thing is a setup by Sue and Sandy to get Rachel away from the Glee Club. So I can kind of give them a pass on requiring Celine Dion for the audition, but my question is, how did the auditions go for the rest of the cast? There's clearly other students involved in this production. Did the boy playing Herr Schultz have to sing My Heart Will Go On to get the part? One gold star, it's just bizarre. As for casting, we only really know that Rachel is Sally Bowles, and I don't really buy a sophomore being given that role, but again, this whole thing is a setup, so eh, I'll give it one gold star again. Next is accuracy to script. I'm actually so excited to talk about this because this is what Loki inspired this video, and I've been thinking about this for years. The two songs that we see performed, Cabaret and Maybe This Time, are accurate as far as I can tell and are both included in the 1998 version of the show. However, we get this bizarre scene that has always made me scratch my head. I'm sleeping with him. So am I. This play's weird. That's Mr. Ryerson's favorite line. Now, I think that this scene is supposed to be a TV-friendly version of this exchange. Oh, screw Maximilian. I do. <sighs> so do I. But that scene is not in the stage version. I checked, does not exist. And to take off even more points, Sally Bowles is supposed to be British in this version, and Rachel does not use an accent. I've never played a character with an accent, but from talking to some real actors that I know, people do tend to practice their lines with the accent that they're going to be using on stage. Because it's so bizarre to me, and because it's bothered me for a good 
decade now, Cabaret gets one star for accuracy. Lastly, we have performances. Again, we only see Rachel do two songs, and I have mixed feelings about them. I will admit to regularly listening to the Glee version of Maybe This Time, but I think by having it as a duet between April and Rachel, it actually demonstrates pretty well why Rachel can't really pull off this part. She sounds good vocally, but Sally Bowles isn't supposed to be a particularly good singer, and when you see the depth of performance and emotion in April's rendition, it really highlights that this is just a 16-year-old singing a song, and really not Sally Bowles. Frankly, I don't think a lot of teenagers could pull off a part like this, and certainly not season one Rachel Berry. I actually agree with Sandy here. What this show needs is a star with a little bit more maturity. In the song Cabaret, Sally is pretty much having a breakdown, and that is definitely not what Rachel is portraying. It's not even close to the Liza version. Here's an example if you haven't seen the stage show. What good is sitting alone in your room? This is terrible. Come hear the music play. This is a disaster. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret. I give it two stars. With pretty low stats overall and no actual performances to give it any extra boost, Cabaret goes in the D tier. Our next show is kind of a bonus as the only community theater production and another one that we don't see any performances from, and that is Les Mis, I'm not gonna pronounce the whole name, <laughs> from the episode Dream On. For a likelihood of choice, I'm gonna give Les Mis a solid three gold stars. While it can be a challenging show for amateur theaters due to its length and the abundance of male roles, which we'll get into soon, it is a very well-known show with a huge ensemble and lots of featured roles, making it a decent choice for a community theater. Now the audition scene is where the meat of this is. I just have so many thoughts on this. So this audition takes place in an auditorium somewhere, which is totally fine, very common. But beyond that, the scene is bananas for anyone who's tried out for community theater before, which I have. First of all, why are people walking around on what looks like the barricade set during auditions? There's a woman just like sweeping up on the stage. Also, I feel bad for this lady who they're trying to make a joke out of auditioning. For some reason, Big Spender is their go-to bad audition song on Glee. So let me get right to the point. What song do you plan on singing? But honestly, she does a decent job for community theater, and I think she could pull off a Madame Thenardier with the right direction. I know this is supposed to be a disorganized community production, and the director runs a laundromat, and that's why it's such a mess, but Still, why are Brian and Will just walking into the auditorium in the middle of somebody else's song and warming up there? Did they not get numbers or anything? Even the most poorly run community productions usually have some sort of order for people to audition in so that other people aren't interrupted in the middle of their song like this. Are you kidding me right Wait, now? Is there a problem out here? Yeah, there's a problem. This guy just stole my song. And then we get to the actual song. First, Will says he's going to be singing The Impossible Dream from The Man of La Mancha, which is maybe a little overdone, but it's definitely appropriate for a Miz audition. To fight for the right Without question or pause To be willing to march into hell For a heavenly cause But then when Brian says he was also going to perform that song, Will goes to Dream On by Aerosmith, so not even close to the genre, time period, vocal range, anything of Les Mis or Jean Valjean. I will again admit that I do love this version of Dream On as a duet, but for a Les Mis audition it just makes no sense and it's pretty awful. And how and why does this underfunded, disorganized community theater have a full band for their auditions? This is not a fantasy. You can see the guitar and the drums on stage. Musical theater auditions usually have an accompanist, so that's someone who plays the piano with sheet music that you bring, and that's it. Maybe in some cases you'll have like a CD or an iPod, um, iPod, nobody has an iPod anymore, an iPhone, <laughs> or maybe even sing a cappella. but a full band for a show that doesn't even have a band like that in it is just not happening. Singing it as a duet is also weird, even with the time crunch. I've done middle school shows where you could sing um, your audition song in a group, but that was only if you were trying out for the ensemble and you chose to do that ahead of time. More likely what would happen is that they would have to do 16 bars instead of a full song. So the whole thing is just a mess. I give it one gold star. I do also want to point out that I understand the character reason for Brian and Will's rivalry, why they don't want to sing the same song. But really, for like a dinky little community theater like this supposedly is, it really is not that big of a deal. <laughs> People are inevitably going to sing the same song. 
Trust me, if this show was auditioning young Cosettes that day, I'm sure this director has heard tomorrow from Annie like a dozen times at least. On to casting. I totally buy Will being cast as Jean Valjean, that's fine, even with the weird audition song. However, even with Sue possibly meddling, how the fuck does this community theater possibly have enough men where Brian doesn't even have a named role? He would at least be one of the barricade boys or some featured soldier or something like that with more than a single line. I also just want to include this clip for anyone who hasn't seen it to illustrate my point. <laughs> Valjean, at last, we see each other plain. Monsieur <laughs> la mer, you'll wear a different shape. Before you say another word, Javert. I'm giving it one gold star. For accuracy of script, we don't have any performances or rehearsals to go off to, so this is hard to judge but the very low bar of the single line that they do show, hooray, isn't even in the show. I, again, looked it up. I could not find anyone saying hooray in act two or act one. It's just not a thing. So one gold star. While Les Mis does have some decent stats for being a likely choice for a community theater, it fumbles just about every other category and doesn't show any performances, bringing it to F tier. On to season two. Finally, we're getting some real performances. Our show featured in the episode Rocky Horror Glee Show is of course, the Rocky Horror Show. Possibly one of the most infamous episodes of Glee. Now for likelihood of choice, I think you know this is getting one gold star. It's pretty much the plot of the whole episode that everyone except for Mr. Shu thinks this is a terrible idea and incredibly inappropriate, and I agree. He says he cut out some of the more risque sections, but I do have to wonder like, what the fuck is left? <laughs> I actually did research and I have found evidence of maybe like two high schools ever doing the show, but it's definitely not a popular choice even a little bit, and especially not at a school that is super homophobic and hates the arts. Not only does the show have a lot of over-the-top sexual material, but it also is a really small cast too, which is not ideal for a high school production. Next, the show doesn't really get an audition process except for Carl, who sings Hot Patootie. They kind of just decide who's playing who. This is a little weird, but considering it's the Glee Club putting it on and not any kind of drama club, it's not completely unrealistic, so I'll give it two gold stars. Casting, for the most part, I actually really love and I think it's pretty accurate. Finn is definitely a perfect Brad, like he's supposed to be this popular quarterback, but he's actually a really goofy guy and I think it works great. All the rest of the featured roles fit very well, and despite Rachel weirdly saying that double casting is standard practice on Broadway, it does happen, but it's not like most shows. But it is fairly common in high school and community theaters where they want to include everyone and there might not be enough roles. In my experience, this was more common for plays rather than musicals, but that just might be like my town, I don't know. I also think they kind of make a big deal about a woman playing Frankenfurter, but from seeing a lot of floor casts of the Rocky Horror Picture Show at least, this isn't an instance where people tend to care that much about gendered casting. It's already such a weird like gender bendy show. I don't think it's as surprising as they make it out to be. Now all of that is great and I think works well and I give it a full five gold stars if not for the fact that they decide to cast two grown adults in this show too. I know they have pointed out how inappropriate it would be for an adult to play Frankenfurter with these teenagers, but Rocky and Eddie also have sexual relationships with the other characters, sometimes shown on stage. Touch It Touch It Touch Me, which is sung between Will and Emma on the show, would be sung by Rachel in this instance who's like 16. So for that, I would like to dock a million points and fire Mr. Shu, but instead I'll just be giving it three gold stars. Accuracy to script, this show does leaps and bounds better than the pitiful example set up by the last two shows. The songs all seem correct, which is good. However, the one scene of dialogue they do show seems to be taken directly from the movie script, which is a little different from the stage version. For example, Rocky in the stage version actually talks and stuff rather than just grunting like in the movie. He's more a book Frankenstein's monster. I know Will said he made edits, but this doesn't really apply to that scene. Also about the edits thing, while it does happen and directors will make little or big changes, we've all seen illegal Heathers, you technically have to ask permission from the licensing company to do this because of copyright laws. So it's not Sue's permission he would need to change the script, it's Concord Theatricals. I just thought I'd point that out. For messing with the script a little, but getting the songs right, I'll give it three gold stars. Performances is definitely where this show stands out. Honestly, everyone does a really solid job acting, singing, dancing. It's really good. I want to give a special shout out to Mercedes. I don't know if this is a popular opinion or not, but I actually like that she really made the character her own rather than just doing like a Tim Curry impression. I'll give it four gold stars. Little bonus issue with this one, why are they doing a full dress rehearsal but still using their scripts? If you're doing full costumes, makeup, hair, everything, you should probably be off book by that point. With a mostly solid cast 
and performances, but some egregiously inappropriate choices and a little deviation from the script, I will put Rocky Horror in C tier. Next, we have season three, West Side Story. And oh boy, there's a lot to talk about with this one. First, for the likelihood of West Side Story for a high school production, we have some obvious strengths and weaknesses. West Side Story is one of the most well-known musicals in history, based off of one of the most famous plays of all time. Most of the characters are young, which is a bonus, and it also has a large ensemble with plenty of feature roles for both guys and girls. It's a fairly common choice for real life high schools. I've personally seen high school productions of it, and my sister has actually been in one. That being said, I do think Glee is exaggerating a little bit when they say it's a safe choice. Yes, compared to Rocky Horror it is, but a really safe choice for a public school would be something like Beauty and the Beast or The Wizard of Oz. You know, completely family friendly, no controversy possible. West Side Story tackles violence, racism, a lot of mature topics for a school show. And while artists whole you need to have sex to authentically play these roles thing is very weird and inappropriate, he does have a point and these characters do have sex with each other, like on stage kind of. It's, it's implied, but you know. Beyond just the themes, some of the casting and production challenges for West Side Story include the fact that it has a complex score and is a very dance heavy show, especially for the male characters. And half of the cast is supposed to be Puerto Rican. Do I think it's unrealistic? that a school 10 years ago would do a show where half of the characters are a specific ethnicity, where only one of the actors actually fits that? Not really, but I still don't think you could easily call that a safe choice. For that mix of reasons, I'm giving it three gold stars. For the audition process, this is the first time we actually see the whole thing, and man, is it a mess. Some of it they get very right, and I'll give them credit where credit is due. Having the directors sitting in their seats with their clipboards while everyone performs on stage is accurate. Good job. Characters singing songs from the show for the audition, also accurate for a high school show. If you don't know, a lot of licensed versions of musicals for amateur theaters actually come with audition materials, so they'll have cuts of different songs from the show to use, specifically for auditions, and a lot of times directors will just ask everyone to sing the same couple of songs anyway. They also show that they have audition forms where the students can put what roles they're interested in, and this definitely happens. I remember doing this in middle school. Honestly, the whole trying out for a specific role thing isn't as common for a high school or community theater as it is for professional shows. A lot of times you go in and just do an audition and then they'll give you whatever role they think is appropriate rather than you trying out for Tony or Maria. The rest of it is just all over the place. First of all, same with Les Mis, you have everyone trying out with a full band and even backup singers and dancers. This is such a glee thing that just doesn't happen in real life. The whole thing also seems to take like days, possibly weeks. It's really hard to tell, but realistically no school has that much time to put on a show. Auditions take place over a few days at most, with maybe an extra day or two for callbacks. It's also frustrating that they don't have dancing or acting auditions. Kurt and Mike have to try to show off these skills themselves with no prompting, which is not usually how it works. West Side Story is a very dance heavy show, like I said before, and there's no way that they wouldn't be doing at least a base dance audition just to see who has the skills. No, instead we have the football players just cast as the Jets and told to learn ballet with no training. The Jets also have to act and sing, I will point out, and they're a huge part of the show. These are not small roles. I also have a big problem with the Maria auditions. I think Rachel's initial song is a decent choice, even though Maria doesn't sing somewhere in the stage version, but all the other Maria songs don't show off the vocal range or genre for that character. This isn't a belting role, and it's not like Mercedes can't sing soprano like that. They just don't show it for some reason. If I was the director choosing between Rachel and Mercedes, I would probably, first of all, have them do a dance audition before any of this happened, and then also have them do a scene or song with the different potential Tonys, rather than this weird diva off thing. You know, you want to see the chemistry between the two actors. We're actually showing the audition process and using the songs from the show, but also being way over the top for any audition, but especially a high school one. I'm gonna give it three gold stars. The casting for this show is also a bit of a mess. Right off the bat, Santana as Anita is very accurately cast for sure. Like I think in any high school setting, she would probably be typecast as Anita. Brittany and Quinn being the Jets girls definitely works, especially considering one, that they're both white and blonde, and also because they're both really talented dancers and those are dancing roles. I also think that Blaine would be the most likely Tony from this pool of actors, even if maybe in a professional version of the show he probably wouldn't be Tony, but the rest of it is pretty jumbled. It's definitely frustrating to watch this episode now and have them just barely touch on the fact that Maria is Puerto Rican and neither actress in the running is even listening. 
Latina. But then they pretty much drop the topic and also they don't look into it any deeper with any of the other characters. When I've seen amateur productions of West Side Story, it kind of works out that anyone with darker hair becomes a shark and anyone with lighter hair becomes a jet, which is maybe not the best way to go about things, but it tends to be how it goes in these situations. And that's kind of what happens with the exceptions of Mike and Blaine. I don't know, it's not entirely unrealistic, but it's definitely frustrating. Probably the most baffling casting choice is Kurt as Officer Krepke. This is not a singing role. It's barely a role at all. Like it's such a small part that a lot of times a teacher will actually step in. There are so many male roles with featured singing parts in this show. Kurt could have easily been like any of the Jets, but he would be perfect for Baby John in my opinion, who's supposed to be the youngest. And since everyone is always talking about how Kurt has his baby face, like I think it would work really well. I feel like what happened is that the writers only kind of remembered West Side Story and they remembered the song G Officer Krupke, but not what the actual character does and just kind of put Kurt in it. It's just strange to see if you actually know the musical. I'll give it two gold stars. For accuracy to script, this one also makes the same mistake as the other shows, strictly following the more famous movie version rather than the actual stage show. It's super, super annoying too, because they get it right with Cool, which is sung by Riff on stage, but not in the movie. However, all the other songs that differ are just following the movie version. This is most egregious in America, which is a completely different song in the two versions. The stage version is actually all women, and the lyrics are completely different. Here you are free and you have pride. Long as you stay on your own side. Free to be anything you choose. Free to wear tables and shine shoes. When I will go back to some oh, hey. When will you shut up and get gone? Everyone there will get big cheer. Everyone there will have moved here. <laughs> And God, it has bothered me for so long that they did this. <laughs> now, this is more of a subjective opinion, but sorry, Artie, your decision to bring the Jets into America is bad. It would make even less sense with the stage version of the song, but even in the movie version, it's just totally missing the point in my opinion. I'm saying this as a second-ish generation American, that this sort of debate between like romanticizing the home country and the country that you've immigrated to is like very, it's very real. And I think bringing outsiders into it and making it like about discrimination instead of what it really is, which is an intra-community issue, doesn't work. It's just weird. So while I do have to give them points for using the correct cool, pretty much everything else is wrong. So West Side Story only gets two gold stars for accuracy. Performances are where this one really shines. Despite my annoyance at their misuse of the movie songs and everything else, I do have to admit that all the songs are really good. Yes, singing and acting is great, but they also have really great choreography and great costumes, and it does make me want to come back to the storyline despite all its many other problems. My only little tiny criticism is this cringe moment. Cool! Go! Crazy, cool, go, crazy, go! I'm sorry, Mike. I don't know why they made you do that. It's like me trying to sing all the parts in the shower. <laughs> this is what it's actually supposed to sound like if you've never heard the song before. Cool, go, crazy, cool, go, crazy, go! Overall, though, the performances are solid enough to make me temporarily forget all the other issues, so I give it five gold stars. For special ability with this show, I do want to mention the fact that they have two faculty members with very loose theater experiences involved in the show. In my middle school, our computer teacher was the choreographer because she's the only one who had any choreography experience, I guess. With an actual audition and casting process and excellent performances, but some serious issues with accuracy and representation, West Side Story goes in B tier. Okay, we have reached our final amateur musical in Glee. Greece, aka Glee. What a weird <laughs> decision that they made there. We're starting off with some strong stats because this is a very likely choice for a high school theater. Not only does Greece have the name recognition and large cast of some of the other former musicals like Les Mis, it also features characters that are in high school and it isn't super complicated in terms of staging or costumes or music. Greece is also, according to data from NPR, the sixth most performed high school musical of the 2010s. It's actually a fairly raunchy show that I think think people kind of overlook because of nostalgia, but it's certainly way more tame than Rocky Horror or Cabaret or even West Side Story. There's also a high school version that's more PG, but that's probably not what McKinley is performing, considering their version has their worst things I could do. Still, this is an incredibly popular and pretty safe choice for a high school, so I'm giving it five gold stars. For the audition process, we have a pretty similar situation to West Side Story with dragged out auditions and a full band, and also in this case multiple pairs of students singing pop song duets, which is weird, but it does have a leg up on the other shows in that they have an actual dance audition and a chemistry read. Now is this how a real dance audition goes? No, this is pretty much the 
the Glee version. But having callbacks where potential Sandys and Dannys perform together, definitely a good thing. For going that step beyond the previous shows, I will give this four gold stars. Next, the casting is almost perfect, in my opinion. I know Kitty is mad at being Patty Simcox because she wanted to be the famous lead, but that's a pretty fun role and I do think she fits it well. Maybe it's a little typecasting because she's a Cheerio and that character is a cheerleader, but I think she should get over it. Sam is also perfect as Kaneki, and I think everyone else just fits their roles really well. I don't even think that Blaine would have been the ideal Danny like they keep saying, so it's probably good that he was cast as something else. My only issues are one, that I would have liked to actually see the full cast list because there are more characters in Grace than the ones that they show. And two, bringing back Santana to play Rizzo, I don't want to doubt that this could ever happen, but it does just feel weird. So please tell me in the comments if anything like this has ever happened at your school, if an older student who already graduated has ever come back to play a character. And I don't mean direct or choreograph or anything like that. That definitely happens, but to actually be in the show as a lead role, I don't know, I, I'm just... I want to call bullshit, but I don't know. Maybe it has happened. Please tell me if it has. <laughs> Overall though, these casting decisions are very logical to me, and I like that they showed the potential Sandys and Dannys in auditions, so it's clear why they chose Marley and Ryder over Kitty and Jake. Four gold stars. Accuracy to script is where this one fumbles the most. Like pretty much all the Glee musicals before it, the writers are bound to the film version and end up making a lot of little mistakes along the way. There's nothing quite so obvious as having the wrong version of the entire song or just making up lines, but there's a bunch of smaller differences that you may notice if you're familiar with the stage version. First, there's a couple of comments that directors make, one about having a brunette Sandy, and one from Finn about a flying car that are just not accurate. Also, a couple of the names are different. Sandy is actually Sandy Dombrowski, not Sandy Olsen. And the character Putsy is named Roger in the stage version. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Super frustrating to me, because they almost got it right, is the fact that Kaniki sings Grease Lightning. Sam mentions this in his audition. Uh, Grease Lightning is my cell phone ringtone, and I been knocked out by a car door before, so I was really looking forward to recreating the reality of that moment on stage. But then in rehearsals, they have Danny sing it for some reason. The final scene also doesn't take place at a carnival like it does in the movie. It takes place at the Burger Palace, which is a pretty central location in the stage musical. And I do have to mention that some of the songs from the movie, including You're the One That I Want, are not in the stage version. However, from my research, it does seem to be really common for schools to get separate licensing for these specific songs, since they're very famous and a different company owns them and owns the rights to the show. So so the differences aren't as blatant as some of the other shows, but they're definitely there. I give it two gold stars. Performances we once again have a knockout. While I probably prefer the West Side Story performances, that's more just a personal bias because I like the songs better. I can recognize that everyone does just as good of a job. I'll give it five gold stars. With solid stats across the board and the most likely choice for a high school to perform, with a few errors for accuracy, Reese goes in A tier. So that's it. That's every amateur musical they did on Glee. They did improve as the seasons went on, at least a little bit, but they all had auditions that could only happen on a TV show, and they were too beholden to the more famous movie versions. And yes, I did not put any of them in S tier. I don't think they deserve that. What do you think? Please share your thoughts in the comments. What was your favorite? Are there any mistakes that I missed? Would you like to see more videos about Glee in the future? Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll definitely have a video out in October once a certain circuit show is released on YouTube, so watch out for that. Thanks so much for watching. Bye! I just want to point out um, this little set that I made. I know I, I don't have that much space to film in my very small bedroom, but I was going to wear this closest thing that I have to a track jacket. It's my dad's jacket, but one, it's a hoodie and it's huge. And also it's very loud. <laughs> so I decided to just use it as set dressing. I hope it looks okay. Also, um, you may have noticed, I don't know how noticeable it's going to be until I edit this and I'm, I don't know, maybe I'll have to re-record, but I, this is the first time I tried doing a fully scripted sit-down video, because I've done like voiceovers before for video essays, and I've done sit-down videos with like an outline, but never with a completely written script. So I tried to do like a, I basically have like a, my laptop as a teleprompter, it's on a stack of books right now, it, it's very precarious, but it's okay. So if you see me like looking around a little bit, that's probably what it is. This is sort of an experiment for me, I, I don't know if I like you know, voiceover videos versus sit-down videos or sit-down videos with outlines more yet. So tell me what you think. Did Was it distracting? I know right now I'm looking in the viewfinder because that's what I do when the viewfinder is there. At least <laughs> the teleprompter gave me something to focus on that wasn't the viewfinder. So that's good, I guess. I'm curious to see how this turns out. I've never done it before. Bye.